thank the organizers for the opportunity to be here and to give this talk. Uh, so this is the setting of this talk, the, some general setting. Uh, we have a compact torus and of course we have a standard representation. Oh, is it? This is not Uh, so the standard representation, just the action of uh, circles by rotations of C. So just coordinate-wise representation and uh, we call, uh, so suppose we have two n-dimensional manifold which is supposed to be smooth, compact, connected with an action of half-dimensional half torus. And, uh, this action is called locally standard if it is locally modeled by the standard representation. So if there is an atlas of charts and each chart is equivalently diffeomorphic to some subset of CN uh, of this standard representation. Okay, so this is a general setting and since the orbit space uh, of uh, CN over TN is identified with a non-negative cone, uh, the orbit space of the locally standard action have, have, has the structure of uh, n dimensional manifold with, com with corners, well, compact manifold. Uh, and this manifold with corners have the following property that every phase uh, of codimension k lies in exactly k distinct facets. Uh, so such manifold with corners are called nice. So all, only nice manifolds appear as orbit spaces of. Uh, locally standard actions and here is an example. So this, this is not nice because we have one, just one one-dimensional phase containing this co-dimension two uh, phase. So this is the corner and only one phase contains it and these are examples of nice manifolds. So this cannot appear in toric topology in our setting. And the most common situation in toric topology is the following, that this orbit space uh, is not just any uh, manifold with corners, but it is acyclic and all its faces are also acyclic. Uh, so examples, you all know these examples, for example, complete smooth toric varieties and quasi-toric manifolds. And let, so S will denote simplicial poset dual to the orbit space. I will give the definition later. Just for now, you can think about simplicial complex of a fan in toric case or simplicial complex dual to, to simple polytope in quasi-toric case. So this, this will be S. And here's, here is a theorem. Uh, so suppose, well, suppose we have uh, this manifold with locally standard action and the orbit space is a cyclic together with, with all faces. Uh, then there is a description of equivariant cohomology ring and ordinary cohomology ring. So equivariant cohomology ring is just um, a phase ring of this simplicial pole set and ordinary cohomology ring is the quotient of this, this ring by linear system of parameters where a linear means of degree two, as usual in topology. So this is a general result of Masuda and Panov, and of course it generalizes two well-known theorems, theorem of Danilo Yurkevich for uh, toric varieties and Davis Yanushkevich for quasi-toric manifolds. And here is the question. So this is, this is a very general question. Uh, well, suppose we have a compact uh, manifold with locally standard action. And suppose we know everything about uh, the orbit space, combinatorics and topology, and also we know characteristic map, whatever it means. So are there simple descriptions of equivariant and ordinary cohomology rings of M itself? So this, is, this, this problem is very general and I will not give the complete answer to this problem. So this is just for you to see what is going on. And here is some observation which helps uh, actually in uh, describing maybe some examples. Actually, manifolds with uh, locally standard actions have explicit models. So we start with a nice compact manifold with corners of dimension n, and we take 
a principal torus bundle over this manifold with corners. And we also have some additional data called characteristic map. It, uh, it doesn't matter, actually, what, do, what does it mean. So this is just some information. And then you can uh, consider the quotient space. So you just collapse, uh, collapse some subtori in, uh, in a principal torus bundle. So this gives you a space x with an action of torus on x and the orbit space is the manifold with corners q from which you started. So in the case when you start with a simple polytope, of course simple polytope is an example of manifold with corners uh, and you just take a trivial uh, torus bundle and you collapse something, this, this gives you a standard model for quasitoric manifold from the paper of Davis and Yanushkevich. But in general, it is known, so this is Yoshida theorem, that the space X constructed, well, in general, is a compact manifold with locally standard action, and actually every manifold with locally standard action appears this way. So, so to find, so to study cohomology, uh, it is enough to work with explicit models with which are constructed just step by step. Uh, and here's the setting for today's talk. Uh, so as I said, I'm not going to work in general setting. I will assume that the following holds. Uh, well, at first, I assume that all proper, fa proper faces of, of the orbit space of this manifold with corners are acyclic. So I weaken the condition. I do not require that Q itself is acyclic, so Q may be arbitrary, but uh, I require that um, faces, uh, proper faces are acyclic. And also I suppose that uh, Y, which was in general a principal torus bundle, I require that Y is, is a trivial bundle. So Y is just the product of with this manifold with corners with a torus and X is, well, it's very similar to, to the model of Davis Yanushkevich. Okay, you are Q to be a torus manifold? Yeah, yeah Q, Q, is, Q is closed. So Q is co com compact, compact manifold with corners. I mean, uh, you are allowed to maintain a low bound uh, it should have boundary because because of this condition, a cyclic condition. So it should have. Uh, well, there are actually two cases whether it doesn't have boundary at all. But this is not interesting because of uh, of this second requirement. So this will be just a product of uh, Q with torus if it is it has no boundary. But if it has boundary, uh, it auth automatically follows that there are. Uh, fixed points of the actions because of this acyclicity condition. So this is quite strong. Every, every phase of Q should have uh, a vertex, actually. So this situation will be called almost acyclic if these two uh, assumptions are satisfied. OK, so now uh, to formulate some answers, I need to give definitions. So this is well known in combinatorics. Uh, what is uh, simplicial? Uh, partially ordered set. So POSET stands for partially ordered set. The partially ordered set is called simplicial if uh, at first it has a minimal element and second if I take any element of this partially ordered set and consider all elements which are less than or equal to this given one then this should give a face lattice of a simplex. So this is just a boolean lattice and also the elements of S are called uh, simplices, and uh, so this, this number k, which appears here, is called the rank, and k minus 1 is called dimension of simplex. Okay, so this is, this is just very natural generalization of simplicial complex. Um, and actually, so this, this, this is combinatorial definition, but uh, you can think about simplicial poset as just a face lattice of some topological object made of, made of simplices. One and actually, if you know some properties of simplicial complexes, 
algebraical or topological or combinatorial. Uh, most, of, most of them uh, have their analogs for simplicial pole sets. Uh, for example, the notion of a Stanley Reisner ring. So, so I the generalization is called phase ring of simplicial pole set. So this is the generalization. Let me briefly uh, recall how it is defined. So suppose we have two simplices, uh, then we denote by, so this denotes the set of meets or greatest lower bounds, and this denotes uh, the set of joints, least upper bounds. And in general, this, uh, these are just some subsets of S. But if S is simplicial, and if uh, the join is non-empty, then the set, uh, the set of meets consists only of a single element, which is also denoted this way. And uh, the phase ring is, uh, well, this is similar to Stanley Reisner rings of simplicial complexes. The phase ring is, uh, is a quotient ring of polynomials, where each indeterminate corresponds to, uh, corresponds to element of S by some relations. Well, it doesn't matter which are the relations, so they're defined using this uh, joints and meets. Uh, so this, this was a generalization of Stanley Reisner ring, and simplicial pole sets arise very naturally from nice manifolds with corners. So actually, if Q is any manifold with corner, then it has some face structure, and faces are ordered by inclusion. And if you take the reverse order, you will get uh, a partially ordered set. And the point is that if you start with a nice manifold with corners, then this uh, partially ordered set uh, with reverse order is simplicial pole set. So this will be called simplicial pole set dual uh, to the manifold with corners. Okay, so let's, uh, let's recall the theorem of Masuda and Panov. Uh, uh, so suppose M is manifold with locally standard action, and uh, S is simply show pole set dual to the orbit space, then equivariant cohomology ring is isomorphic to, to the phase ring of S. Well, graded isomorphism. So this, this result uh, explains the appearance of phase rings, and here we have uh, a generalization of this fact. So this is in our joint work with Mikia Masuda, Son John Park, and Hao Ji Zen. So suppose uh, we, have, we are in almost a cyclic situation. So the orbit space uh, may, may be not a cyclic, but all proper phases are a cyclic. And X is some uh, manifold corresponding to this Q, then its equivariant cohomology ring is just the direct sum of phase ring and uh, the, uh, the cohomology of the orbit space. So actually, this is not surprising. Is it reduced cohomology? Uh, yeah, actually reduced, so I just glue together units in both rings. So you said the direct sum of graded ring is the truest modules over BT? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but uh, uh, but I th as I remember this this one is tri trivial structure. Well, that one is probably trivial. Is it yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. This this one, this one, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, this is true for modules. Um, so th yeah, this is not surprising, but uh, for ordinary cohomology. Uh, Actually, this is, this is more complicated, so we do not have uh, this good description for ordinary non-equivariant cohomology ring. So, so we need to do something, and first remark here is the following. Uh, so we can consider the Borel construction of X, uh, and there is a standard fibration uh, with fiber X, and let's Pi be pi denote this fibration and I be the inclusion of fiber. So these are just two maps and they induce ring homomorphism in ring homomorphisms in cohomology. Uh, and this co this homomorphism is uh, composed to zero in positive degrees. 
So actually we have uh, this ring homomorphism. Let me write it down because I will need this later. So we just take the image of, uh, of polynomial ring in equivariant cohomology. Uh, and uh, we take a quotient by ideal generated by this image. So I can take just H2 here. And this goes to uh, cohomology of X. And actually we have, uh, so, here, so here we have inside uh, this ring we have the face ring. So K is a ground ring uh, here of S. And when we take this quotient, we actually take the quotient by linear system of parameters here. So this, this lies inside this ring, and it is also mapped here. And uh, oh, sorry. When the orbit space is acyclic together with all faces, then this, this isomorphism uh, is uh, this homomorphism is actually an isomorphism, so it is known, and this gives this result uh, mentioned in this, all the theorem, theorems. Uh, but uh, yeah, in general, uh, this homomorphism is neither injective nor subjective, so so we should study what is going on. So we should find kernel and co-kernel of this homomorphism. Okay, so to proceed, I need a few more definitions from. Uh, combinatorial, some combinatorial commutative algebra. Uh, so, well, at first, if we, if we have simplicial poles that we can define homology, just like for simplicial complexes, and we can also define the notion of link. So every simplex in S has a link. So this is a formal definition. And this collides with links uh, in simplicial complex, in the case when S is simplicial complex. Is that inequality uh, Sorry? Uh, no, no. We, sh we should we, we should have a minimal element actually. So th so th this this is a for this this is a kind of uh, for, for formality. So simplicial simplicial pole set is a pole set which have which at least have some minimal element. And uh, in this case, when we take, when we define link uh, like this, so this is just some sub set of S. And it should have a minimal element, and actually this I is a minimal element. So this, this, this will be an, an empty simplex of S. Yeah, well, anyway, just, just believe me that this, this, these are just links. So uh, we can define links. And uh, simplicial pose that is called Cohen Macaulay if all links, uh, including the link of, of an empty simplex, which is just S itself, are acyclic up to top dimension. So this is a Cohen Macaulay property. And if this holds for all simplices except uh, the minimal one, so if any proper link is a cyclic up to top dimension, then S is called Buxbaum. And as typical examples, you can consider spheres. So spheres are typical examples of coin macaulay complexes, and manifolds are examples of Buxbaum complexes. Excuse me, Andrew, yeah. after that, the definition of link, I think there is a point there. In the case where the process is a simplicial complex, does that coincide with the normal definition of link? Yes, yes, it coincides. But, but, uh, form, yeah. yeah, yeah, form. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this this coincides. Yeah. Uh, but, but you should uh, look at minimal elements just on empty synthesis. Okay, and you can also define 
f and h vectors. So f and h vectors are defined in usual way as for simplicial complexes. There is nothing new, but I also need h prime numbers. So h prime numbers are just h numbers uh, with some additional terms with Betty numbers of s. So there is, there is a huge expression. But anyway, well, if s is coin Macaulay, this h prime numbers coincide with h numbers because Betty numbers disappear. But in general, these are different characteristics. And uh, the motivation for these uh, numbers uh, lies in actually in two theorems, in two propositions from commutative algebra. So first is just the observation by Stanley, and you can easily prove it uh, using the definition of Cohen-Macaulay module that if S is Cohen-Macaulay, and if we have a system of parameters, well, linear system of parameters in its phase ring, then uh, dimensions of homogeneous components of this uh, ring are just H numbers. So this is Cohen Macaulay case. And here is another theorem uh, which is much more complicated. It has complicated proof, algebraical uh, theorem by Schensel. So Schensel proved it for simplicial complexes and Novik Schwartz for pole sets. So in this case, S is Buxbaum, and we also have some linear system of parameters in its phase ring. Uh, then dimension, the dimensions of homogeneous components are of, of this quotient ring are H prime numbers. So they, these numbers appear this way. And why do we need all these things? Well, well, first observation, which is well known, if Q is manifold with corners, uh, which is a cyclic and in which all faces are a cyclic, then the dual uh, partially ordered set S should be Cohen Macaulay. And of course, it, it naturally generalizes to the following observation that if Q is just a manifold with corners in which all proper faces are a cyclic, then the dual pole set should be Buxbaum. Uh, and also, S have the same homology as, as the boundary of Q. Well, okay. Now, uh, I'm going to state some result about the cohomology of X. So, as before, Q is manifold with corners. X is some corresponding uh, manifold with local standard action. And S is simplicial posted dual to Q. And I also assume for simplicity that Q is orientable, and so X is also orientable. And let delta, delta i denotes, uh, den denotes the connecting homomorphism in the cohomology exact sequence for this pair. So Q is manifold with corners, thus, of course, Q is manifold with boundary. OK, under these assumptions, uh, we have the following. Uh, so actually, there is a bigraded structure in the cohomology of X uh, in which non-diagonal terms so the terms uh, with i not equal to j are described uh, by the topology of torus and topology of, of the orbit space. But this is not very interesting. And the interesting thing is in this group. So diagonal groups, when we have i and j equal, uh, have the following dim dimensions. So these are expressions, and let me uh, explain you what uh, what is it about. So actually, as I told you, uh, so we have this map from from the quotient ring of the phase ring to cohomology of X, and the, actually there are uh, there should be kernel and co-kernel of this map. Uh, so this formula. So this, this is dimension of this ring. Well, the graded component, homogeneous component. Uh, and I should add co-kernel. So this is actually the dimension of co-kernel here. And I should subtract dimension of kernel. 
So actually, I have uh, so these uh, dimensions of this kernel and core kernel are these numbers. And actually, I can describe them explicitly, but I will not write it on the on the board on the blackboard or at the slides. So actually, um, there is a description of uh, of this kernel and core kernel in terms of generators here and here. And uh, another observation is that uh, over a field there are actually holes by graded Poincaré duality, like this. So you can, you can see this from these formulas, actually, that this is just uh, Poincaré duality for the torus and poincaré Lefschetz duality for this Q. So they are dual to each other. So these non-diagonal components and, well, as a consequence, since the whole groups are dual, the whole cohomology groups are dual, for uh, diagonal components, there also holds uh, Poincaré duality. And for, for these uh, diagonal components, from this Poincaré duality follows uh, follow then Somerville relations for this manifold S. Well, anyway, let me uh, in, in the last two minutes say a few words about uh, the proof. Uh, what, what is the idea of the proof? Actually, it is very straightforward. Uh, so in the orbit space, we have a filtration by, uh, well, by faces, by dimensions of faces of Q. So here we have a filtration. And when we multiply by torus, let's just remember the explicit model for manifold with corners. So at first, I need to take a principal fibration. And I assume that I take a trivial fibration. So this gives some filtration on Y. And after I take after I take the quotient map, this induces the filtration on X, and actually this is, this is the filtration which is very natural. You, you all know this filtration. This is just filtration by uh, orbit dimensions. So I have this filtration, and uh, thus I have spectral sequences, and I prefer to work with homology. So these are homology spectral sequences for now. Uh, OK, I have these spectral sequences, and I can just describe Everything, everything about the spectral sequences. So for for Q for the orbit space, uh, this sequence has has yeah very simple structure, and uh, I can I, ca I can describe all higher differentials. So it doesn't collapse this spectral sequence, but everything can be described. And then when I uh, pass to Y, I just multiply with homology, well, or cohomology of torus, yes, there should be homology. Uh, thus, uh, I also have description of this spectral sequence. And now I have this map from y to x. And this induces me the map, the map of spectral sequences. And actually, at most positions uh, in, in the second page, this map is an isomorphism. Well, and uh, at this diagonal positions, it is uh, injective. And, and this, this basic theorem gives, gives uh, a complete description of, of the whole spectral sequence EX. Uh, and just, just to explain about uh, bigraded structure, well, it is uh, induced by the bigraded structure in the homology or cohomology of Q times T. So this is very simple by graded structure. OK, and well, actually, this basic theorem, uh, so it requires some work to prove this. So I used some, uh, some facts from uh, the theory of cellular sheaves and cellular sheaves and some duality results uh, between them. So this is the idea of the proof. And I stop here. Thank you.